here we are for the last race before the uh, Pentel Truck Series Season Number Two Chase here at the Martinsville Speedway for the running of the ARP 250. So it's gonna be one wild race to see who can make the Pentel Truck Series Chase. Now let's take a look at our starting lineup on the pole. How surprising! Jake Jefferson in the 22 hasn't driven a truck in the Pentel Truck Series, and he comes out and gets a pole in his first ever start. He's relieving for the injured Carter Friesen, who was driving the 99 in the Gary Cup Series and was crashed hard into the inside wall, broke a leg and a wrist. Hope he gets okay soon. He should be back in a few races to end out the season with that 22 team. To the outside, Jefferson is the 32 of J.J. Reed, then 30 of Alex Stewart. Your points lead Luke Rainey in fourth, even though points lead wouldn't matter. Going into the chase, it would just be a little bit of bragging rights and some momentum. And riding out the top five, we got Jeff Wright. Then sixth, they have Jason Larker, seventh, Julius Anderson, Eli Bright, eighth, ninth, Adam Lewis, and fourth, and points lead Jack Table, rounding out the top ten. Then the rest of the field goes Jeremy Heath and Derek Hamill, then Noah Ely and Ray Sir. Ronald Emmerich in third in points straight rating. He's also looking to sweep the Martinsville races this season. They got Brandon Thunder and Avi Hernandez. Brentley Pearson, last race winner, Joe Jefferson, he got himself into the chase with that victory. They got James Barker and last year's Duke Cole. Code Luigi and Junior Ramos, second in points, Tim Gary and only 11 back of Luke Rainey. They got Jake Moss. Alexander Rowan, Michael Canto, Isaac Nichols, and Josh Semito, DJ Reed, and Josiah Kaufman, Cynthia Bright, and Cortez Newman, then Taylor Bryan Price, and Max Harrison, rounding out the field in 36th and 35th, respectively. So there's your starting lineup for the last race before the chase here at Martinsville. As we now get on trackside, here the command. So 36 trucks fire up. Only 10 will leave happy. The other 26 will go home knowing they don't have a shot at the championship. We're about to find out who that is. Jefferson leads the field to the green flag. We're racing at Martinsville. See who gets into the chase. Coming off of four, Jay Jefferson. Pulls away from Alex Stewart and the others. He leads lap one. The outside lane did not get going. JJ Reed's going to try and slot into that third position right there. Get down front. Jeff Bright. Can he do it? Bright really dive bombs the corner trying to make that not happen. They come off of turn number two. Alex Stewart trying to run down Jay Jefferson at the front of the field. The first battle is between Jeff Bright and Luke Rainey for the fourth position. Remember, Rainey is your points leader coming to this race. He could try and get down front. Derek Hamill possibly. The inside lane such a big advantage here at Martinsville. Looks like he will be able to get down from that. Ooh, Hamill really drove it in there. Can he make it stick down that bottom lane is the question. Can he get the drive off? Really drove it in hard. You expect that he didn't get the drive off, but he did get nice drive off right there. JJ Reed to the top side. Jeff Bright looking underneath him. It's a bow for third. It's almost like the guys on the bottom kind of got their tires warmed up a little bit faster than the guys on the... Uh, or excuse me, the guys on the bottom got their tires warmed up a little bit more than the guys on the top. As the caution has come out for a big crash, fourth and points lead Jack Tavo is involved. As these guys stop to avoid it, they have taken the caution flag. Here comes Jay Jefferson and Alex Stewart coming around. They're going to be 1-2 to get back to the caution flag. Well, Jeff Bright really out of line there. Cynthia Bright has stopped on the... Ooh, Jason Larker hit her, but I don't believe that should be much. Racer has stopped. Let's hope he can get going there. If Cynthia would despawn, he can get going. There he goes. These guys now stuck. Let's hope that that doesn't affect anything because Martinsville is a weird racetrack, as we all know. Cortez would actually get going. If these guys would actually get going, but why would they? Why is the pace track going by these people? I don't understand that. Tim Gary has damage. He's second in points. I don't know how much that will affect him considering it's Martinsville. Lee Jack Tavo, of course, with the most damage. All right, good. They let those guys by. I'm always afraid that's not going to happen at Martinsville. So let's see up until Lee Jack Tavo to bring out caution number one. So they start out three wide. That's Lee Jack Tavo and the old one up top. Makes contact with the Royal Nemrick. They go up the track. Then they go four wide, which uh, I've never seen done. Five wide, even. That's definitely not going to work. Three wide's pushing it. Four wide definitely doesn't work. And five wide, you're just going insane. Spins the old one around. Some others get involved, like Jeremy Heath and Noah Ely. Trey Rainey steps on the brakes. Tim Gary gets involved. Jake Moss gets some damage. Cynthia Bright, DJ Reed, Max Sanderson, some others as well. So yeah, uh, five wide does not work at Martinsville, in case you were wondering. And we just found that out. 
In fact, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I, I ever would have thought I would have seen five wide, but at Martinsville, of all places. But lo and behold, I just saw it. So let's uh, go on board with some of these drivers that were near this record involved. First, we Jack Table in the 01. Tough damage there to the 01 car. Tim Gary, second in points, also got some pretty similar damage. Oh. Pretty hard hit right there to the nose to nose. And one more. Trey Rainey trying to sweep here at Martinsville. Did a very good job right there, nagging his way through that. So back in front, it was the 22 of Jay Jefferson. Of course, they are going to stay out, and Jefferson leads back to the green flag. Come back to the restart. Lap number 10, Jay Jefferson is out front. Cynthia Bright and Jack Taylor are both laps down, but they're still in the race. So Jay Jefferson will be leading in second. <coughs> in second, you have Alex Stewart. Jeff Bright in third, JJ Reed fourth, and Derek Hamill running at the top five. Here they come for the restart. Jay Jefferson still out front. He's led all nine make or yeah, all nine laps here today. Green flag back waving. Alex Stewart with a big time restart to get to the inside. Jay Jefferson before they hit turn one. Some of these trucks were not expecting those, those trucks on the inside to come flying up like that. Alex Stewart takes the race lead and Cynthia Bright might catch that 22 on the outside. These are three RCR teammates right here. Jay Jefferson, the guy in second. Jeff Bright, the one in third. And Cynthia Bright, the lap truck. It looks like Cynthia not cutting her... Uh, teammate any slack right there and Jay might fall all the way back to third right here. Yeah, Alex Stewart either timed that restart or laid back a lot because he got a big time run on the 22. Jeff Bright might have tried to let uh, Jefferson in line right there. It looks like he's going to do that. So Jefferson falls back to second. Alex Stewart gets the race lead. But can Stewart keep it is the question. Jay Jefferson has had a pretty good truck but has Stewart had a better one? We just haven't seen that six truck out front. Something we keep forgetting. This is the race to get into the chase. So some drivers with the victories trying to get it. Trying to get in, get the points they need. Some drivers without victories trying to get their first wins of the season. And then some drivers that just need a second victory to get in. See, coming off pit road, that's the 08 of Alexander Rhodes. Hope he doesn't stay to the inside of the six-track entering the corner. It looks like he does merge up in line. And that keeps that six-track single file. No real battles inside the top 10. As you can see, Luke Rainey, your points there, is falling all the way back to the 11th position. Joe Jefferson has just made his way up to 12th. Lee Jack Table still falling on the outside lane. Remember, ton of damage to that 01 truck. Side by side battle right here, Brand Thunder and Adam Lewis. That is for the 9th position. Lewis had it. Thunder is going to get right on by and take it. Luke Rainey, your points leader, is coming up to the front. He should probably be able to keep that points lead as uh, Trey Rainey is kind of stuck back there a little few positions behind Luke. Uh, Tim Gary has a ton of damage along with Lee Jack Tavo. So uh, Rainey should be able to keep that points lead going into the chase. And as we said, it doesn't really matter. It's just some momentum, maybe some bragging rights going into the chase. Say, hey, we were the best in the regular season. Try and beat us in this seven race chase now. Seven race elimination chase. And even if you have a win and you know you're in the chase like Luke Rainey, like Trey Rainey, you want another victory because each win is worth five points towards the start of the chase once again uh, once we get to the rounds it's all reset but still five bonus points to start the chase out you definitely don't want to be eliminated in round one so this could help uh protect that as jj reed has gotten around jeff bright and carter or jeff bright and jay jefferson i'm gonna make that mistake a lot uh so obviously the 22 and the three may have worn their tires off as derrick hamill's just moved around the three so we'll see if hamill can move around the 22 very easily as well as jj reed is pulling away from third on back jason larker come with the run on the number three truck. Now Jason's brother Steve will actually be subbing for uh, Carter Friesen in the Gary Cup series. Steve is the driver of the number 33 in the Target series and uh, he's having a lot of success there. He's in the chase right now so uh, how is going to be driving the Cup car going to affect him because is he going to you know have to use more time with the Cup car or possibly do worse in the Target Series chase, or is it just going to help them get more experience and get up there? We'll find out once uh, some of those double races come on by. Of course, Martinsville is only Trucks and Gatorade Cup. After this, I believe we'll be going to Fontana, California, which should be a fun race. 
I believe, three of the four series visiting there. I believe it's Trucks, Target, and Cup. And once again, never disappoints out in California. So we are past halfway. Alex Stewart has pulled away from second on back. He has a lap truck in between he and second. And J.J. Reed is nowhere to be seen in the Sixes rearview mirror. Jay Jefferson has held on to that third position over Derek Camel. Jason Lurk has moved to the fifth. Uh, Ray Sarr, I believe, is now up to the sixth position. Jeff Rice found the seventh, maybe even eighth, as he's stuck on the outside lane. Brand Thunder moving underneath. Luke Rainey's there. His teammate Roland Emmerich, Eli Bright, Joe Jefferson, and a ton of other trucks just trying to get up there. See, Trey Ray, remember, we said he's trying to sweep here. Martin Zilli's right now running in the 18th position, I believe it is. Yes, he's 18th right now. So about middle of the road there. And just not, not the day he wanted. He has two wins this season, so he will probably start out the chase uh, tied with the uh, chase points lead, I believe. But once again, another victory can never hurt. Look up back to the front. Alex Stewart is dominating this race. Once he got by Jay Jefferson on that restart, it's been smooth sailing for that six truck. And Stewart looking to try and get into the chase if this win could get him in. He does have some lap trucks. I believe it's the 75 and the 4. They are both damaged. Be interesting to see how he can negotiate with them the 01 and the 60 are also ahead so some of these other guys are ahead and slow see how they can do some weird things after coming off the corner i don't know if they're spinning the tires are up but again a little bit lower there and have to kind of swoop back up to the top of the track to get a nice arc into the corner no real battles inside the top time. I believe I see one back here with the 9 and the 13. That is for the 10th position. Joe Jefferson looking to keep that momentum running. He's going for that 10th. He gets it from Roland Emmerich. And now he has his sight set on your points there. Luke Rainey for the 9th position. Luke has just been a uh, model of consistency this whole season. He's had more top 10s and top 5s than anyone, I believe. He only has one victory at Pocono. But um, still, it's been a great season for Luke. And one of these hoping to continue in the seven race chase. Of course, the seven races, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I haven't really looked in a while. I believe the seven races are Auto Club, Phoenix, Pensacola, Texas. Um, Texas, Atlanta, Rockingham, and Homestead. I believe that's it. Auto Club, Phoenix, Pensacola. Uh, Talladega is in there somewhere, though. Uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna have to do some more research on that and we might not go to Rockingham in the trucks I'm not so sure but uh off that topic uh, we're back to the race Alex Stewart is still leading He's now catching lap traffic in form of DJ Reed and Tim Gary He's still a lap track in between he and DJ or JJ Reed and still a 2.22 second lead over that 32 Joe Jefferson has moved around your points leader Luke Rainey for that ninth position So the nine truck still on the charge. He's gonna move, he might move up into the top five if uh, this race stays green and uh, if those tires can stay on that truck, 10 laps to go here at Marchville, that's only five miles, half half a mile each time they go around this little paper clip. Brand Thunder has been challenging Jeff Bright pretty much this whole race. That is for the seventh position. Right has his sixth race, sir. Great run for him. And then uh, Jason Larkin, fifth. Derek Hamill, Jay Jefferson is held on to the third position. So good day for him. Of course, once again, the substitute for Carter Friesen. So wasn't really expecting much out of him. But once again, the pole. Shodi said the fire DJ Reed has gone around off the corner. Does that bring out a yellow is the question. I don't believe it did. I don't know how it didn't. He was completely sideways as now Alex Stewart will catch Tim Gary. So Reed gets it going, I'm guessing, and uh, we don't see a caution flag. So very interesting there how a caution did not come out for that. Let's take a look at that really quickly. Oh, your race leader spun him out too. Stewart was like, hey, I have to get around. Spun DJ Reed to the inside. No caution came out for that. So Stewart possibly could have just derailed his whole race right there by spinning that 75 out if a caution came out. But luckily, uh, caution didn't come out. Stewart keeps his big lead, but it did uh, fall just a little bit. The yeah, 32 has calmed just a little bit. Stewart has to get around Tim Gary and fast. JJ Reed will keep running him down if he stays behind this 4 or the 01. 6 to go. Stewart does look to the inside of Tim Gary. Now, the bad thing for Stewart is if Cynthia Bright can get to the inside of Tim Gary here, going into three or off of three or whatever, uh, it'll allow J.J. Reed to go right through with that 33 truck. I don't know if she can, though. She's sideways underneath that four truck. She does get a run down the straightaway. She will stay beside Tim Gary. Now, J.J. Reed has to dive on this corner and hope that the old one possibly holds up the six, and uh, that could be a race to the finish there between the 32 and the six. However, 
Nothing's ever given. Five laps to go. The gap is down to under a second now. Racers fall back to the eighth position. Jeff Bright and Brent Thunder have both passed him. As we've now got four laps to go, the gap is closing just ever so slightly. Lee Jack Taylor does the smartest move he can in that situation. He moves on out of the way. He will not affect the outcome of this race. Smart move there by Octavo. He won a race because of lap trucks earlier in the season at Charlotte, so he knows how it is, and he's saying, hey, I'm just not going to affect this race. I'm going to move out of the way, move up top in the corners, give the leaders the bottom, let them race this out. Cynthia Bright doesn't want to move around the 01, though. It's holding up J.J. Reed. If you can get underneath that 01, Reed will have a shot, but I, I believe this is Alex Stewart's race to lose. Coming to two laps to go, it'll be a mile left. Uh, they're just getting by the 01 now. Unless something mechanical happens to the six truck, he has this easily. Two laps to go at Martinsville. Dominating fashion for Alex Stewart here today. Only two drivers will lead this race. Jay Jefferson led the first nine laps. Alex Stewart takes it from him on the restart. Never looked back as he sees the white flag one more time around Martinsville in the ARP 250. And it looks like he will close out a dominating day with a victory here at the paperclip. He'll get a nice grandfather clock. As he enters three and four, Alex Stewart dominating performance here at Martinsville. He comes off a four grandfather clock time for Alex Stewart. He wins it at Martinsville. And it looks like Derek Hamill gets to that fourth, third position there at the end. So great run for Hamill. And great run for Alex Stewart. Dominates here at Martinsville. Staves his tires and pulls away from everyone to get to the race win. Let's now go check the finishing results and let's see who your 10 drivers into the chase are. So here are the finishing results from the ARP 250 at Martinsville. There's only one caution flag for five laps, and there was one lead change among two different drivers. Alex Stewart leads 29 of the 38 laps to get to victory lane. J.J. Reed ends up second right where he started. Derek Hamill ends up third great day for him. Now that could possibly help him get into the chase because of how great he did. Jay Jefferson on pole for a sub. Not bad of a day. Starts on pole, leads the first nine laps, gets passed on the restart, but ends up in the fourth position. Not bad for Jay Jefferson. Jason Larker rounds out the top five. Then you got Brand Thunder in sixth, Jeff Bright in seventh, Ronald Nurmick in eighth, Joe Jefferson in ninth, and Eli Bright rounding out the top ten. So there's your top 20. You can see Luke Rainey in 13th. He keeps that points lead heading into the chase. Trey Rainey, his brother, almost passed him there at the end. Rainey gets up to four, or Trey gets up to 14th there at the end. So solid day for both of those guys. They keep uh, some high positions in the points heading into the chase. And, uh, of course, they want to have that just as momentum and some bragging rights. 31 cars finish on the lead lap. 36 finished the race running. Alexander Rowe made a green flag pit stop. Lee Jack Table was slow. Cynthia Bright got stuck on the banking. DJ Reed got spun around and had the damage. And of course, Tim Gary also had the damage. So that's why all those guys were lap or laps down. Now let's go to the point standings and see who the 10 drivers are who made the chase. And here are the point standings. Here are the 10 drivers who are in the chase. They are Trey Rainey with two wins. Jeff Bright with two wins. They got Luke Rainey, Tim Gary, Joe Jefferson, Louis Jack Table, Eli Bright, Adam Lewis, Racer, and Julius Anderson. Those are your 10 drivers. Just missing it out with the victory, Derek Hamill. 20 points back of Anderson. He did all he could do today. He got third position. He was just 20 points shy. If Anderson or Ely finished a spot or two less, he possibly could have gotten up there. Just tough break for Hamill. A few positions short. Avi Hernandez, your Daytona winner, just did not have the luck after Daytona. 17th in the points, did not make the chase. Same with Lafter Stu Cole. I believe he won the second race at Chicago. So once again, your early winners just not having the luck. Stu Cole falls to 19th in the points and just did not have any luck to get into the chase. You look down at the rest. Alex Stewart moves up to 21st, just was not enough to get into the chase. DJ Reed, you can see a whole block of uh, winners right here. DJ Reed, Jake Moss, Brandon Thunder. Isaac Nichols and Cortez Newman all need a second win, all need to get into the top 25 points. It was not going to happen for them here today. And those are your winners this season. So once again, your 10 chasers are the 18 of Trey Rainey, the 3 of Jeff Bright, the 88 of Luke Rainey, the 4 of Tim Gary, the 9 of Joe Jefferson, the 01 of Lee Jack Table, the 2 of Eli Bright, the 19 of Adam Lewis, the 09 of Racer, and the 98 of Julius Anderson. So there are your chasers heading into these final seven races for the chase as they are 
the Sony 200 at All Club, Subway 250 at Phoenix, the K&M 250 at Pensacola, the Nationwide 250 at Texas, the FedEx 300 at Talladega, Samsung 250 at Rockingham, and then the Chevy 250 at Homestead. So the next race, of course, the Sony 200 at All Club. That's going to be one fun race. See you guys then.